Hello there, my fellow shady princeps and moderati, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Today we're gonna approach a topic that a lot of people have asked me about in the past. It is also one of the most mysterious, and yes, sinister, organizations ever created during the Great Crusade. One that supposedly still exists even in the present. Ladies and gentlemen, you may or may not have heard about them, but today you're gonna learn a few things about them anyway. The Ordo Sinister. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The forces of the Great Crusade were myriad in nature, and as the remembrances were fond to style them, I quote, as numberless as the stars themselves. This is only befitting, as the task for which this vast army of the Imperialis Militarum was conceived and embodied was for no less than the staggeringly incomprehensible goal of domination of the entire galaxy. This required weapons and warriors, from the uncounted pioneer corps of the indentured laborers, hundreds of thousands strong, to the superhuman might of the Legiones Astartes a gene-crafted post-human fighting force greater than any in history. The will and reason of the Emperor divined and designed for the Great Crusade in effect a weapon and a warrior for every conceivable form of war, and even those inconceivable until they had to be fought. Unhallowed wars against powers and horrors beyond human imagination and beyond mere human endurance. One such dark creation, an experiment maybe in weaponry long forbidden, and carried out by the hand of the Emperor himself, led to the creation of this Ordo Sinister. The exact genesis of the experiments which led to the creation of the Ordo Sinister is difficult to pin down by the scholars of the later ages. As with almost all that began in the prohibited vaults of the Emperor's own laboratories beneath the Imperial Palace, its nature remains sealed by time, and by the destruction that was to follow. Such records that do remain within the Martian Mechanicum, however, who, given the nature of the Ordo Sinister's origins, were seriously disturbed by the project, or more accurately their exclusion from it, do evidence certain speculations. They believed it was arrived at either as a tangent of what was to become the Emperor's greater work in the control and manipulation of the Psyker Factor in human evolution, or as a direct attempt to develop esoteric weaponry on the macro scale, to combat certain encountered menaces which had proven terrible in the cost of their destruction. The menaces included things like the Enslaver Alpha Incursion, the Rangdon Ossivores, and the Hellespont Void Forms. All of these had taken the lives of millions of soldiers and thousands of vessels to combat. They had also broken entire expedition fleets and titan legions in the past, and they were menaces to which no sure counter existed outside of Exterminatus. The purpose for what became the Ordo Sinister was the battlefield employment of macro-level weaponry of mighty potency, and of a nature which was expressly forbidden to anyone within the Imperium be they Primarch or Governor on the pain of death. These were weapons born from the Dark Age of Technology, and maybe ancient relics of civilizations which had risen and fallen before life had even begun on primeval Terra. Weapons forbidden to all but those under the Emperor's direct shadow and control, and even then only under the greatest possible conditions of secrecy and failsafe. The Ordo Sinister was the cadre set up to build, maintain, and use these forbidden weapons, classified, as their very name suggests, as Sinistrum. The word itself has long stood as the Terran Tech Arcana classification for prohibited technology, designed to artificially amplify or weaponize the Psyker's gift, usually at the cost of the Psyker himself, body or mind. Examples, such as the Culexine Shackles, used by the narco-enslaved Psyker Covens of the Caucasus Waste subjugated by the Emperor during the Unification Wars, had long been bywords for the evils of the Dark Age of Technology. It is unknown just how long the Ordo had existed in the Emperor's shadow, but their first prominence came during 967 M30 with a writ of compulsion. 
This was issued by the Emperor and required the deliverance of a grand total of 25 operational battle titans of the Warlord class to the Vault Imperialis on Terra in perpetuity. This extraordinary request caused a strong reaction in the Mechanicum hierarchy, splitting it between those who fervently considered the Emperor to be the living incarnation of the Omnissiah and therefore immediately entitled to any of his servants' works, and those who saw with a more political eye, deeming the demand to be a violation of the spirit if not the letter of the Treaty of Mars, which bound the Mechanicum to the Imperium and guaranteed its rights. To this latter group, the specter of potential Titan legions being formed without the sacred imprint of the Mechanicum at their inception or control was the beginning of the end of Mars's independence. Schism was threatening, but after an audience between the Fabricator General and the Emperor, the colossal demand was met, and any further open malcontents within the Machine Cult's ranks over this issue were suppressed. However, one would be a fool to think that this would bore no ill will, and this ill will continued to grow until it manifested in later events. Mars herself bore the brunt of the burden, delivering eight warlords from her own reserves, while new production and requisitions from the forge world of Metallica, Pharon, Arachnus, Caradrian Magna, and Voss made up the rest. The transfer was viewed as a crime by some and as a blessing by others. But this event, also known as the Oblation, as the followers of the Machine God named it, nothing would come to pass for several years afterwards. The God Machines were swallowed as if without a trace on Terra, despite their scale and power. Twenty-five of the most powerful war machines ever made by humanity, for all intents and purposes, simply vanished. Skagen 6 was a largely unremarkable human-occupied world upon the southern border of the Segmentum Solar, rendered compliant in 860 M30 by the 4th Legion in a relatively bloodless action, it had grown rapidly in population. Waves of migration were brought in from overcrowded worlds closer to the Segmentum Solar core, as well as the rapid increase in the hive-style urbanization and industrialization which followed. The result for Skagen 6 was political instability, simmering insurrection, and the threat of full-scale civil war by 946 M30. It was then that a local arbitrator lord requested help from the sector overlords, saying that the world had become a factionalized powder keg ready to explode. The response to the lord arbitrator, when it came, was a rather unexpected one. A flotilla of vessels sent from Terra herself, comprised of a single, unmarked Titan conveyor and an escort of Saturnine Fleet Solar Auxilia cruisers, and, most shocking of all, an auger frigate in the scarlet and gold panoply of the Imperial Household Squadron. A single lander crucible deployed from the unnamed Titan conveyor and descended to the starport of Decora Breaks near the capital city plate of Skagen 6. Its cargo upon this mounting was to be a single Warlord Titan, liveried in deep green-black verdigree and bearing a snarling lion head in cold argent as the sigil. Upon its armorial was featured no symbol or sign recognizable as belonging to any Titan Legion of the Imperium. Instead it bore the words Ordo Sinister, Favore Dominetur. And what was judged to be a Titan's blazon name, Polaris Albedelach. However, within solar days, such a strange-sounding title was replaced by one far more appropriate in the whispers of the natives of Skagen 6. They called it the King of Terrors, after the Psyker tarot card of the same name, for where this god engine walked, fear walked alongside it. Of course, such towering colossi of destruction rightly engender fear in those that look upon them. Such is their inherent quality of awe and warlike splendor that even the most jaded soldier cannot but quake when in the presence of such a terrifying machine of destruction or while contemplating what it was capable of. However, the fear that this monstrous newcomer inspired was something else entirely. Fear bled from it like a miasma, flowing out to chill the bone and still the heart. Crowds were fleeing from it in unreasoning panic 
while others could do nothing but fall prostrate in abject terror as the Titan passed through the city's great arterial travelways. As it walked, it never fired its hulking weapons, nor sounded its siren in anger. Where it did walk, the world was still, and where its shadow passed upon the horizon, the sleep of the just and the guilty alike was wrecked equally with cold dreams of death and oblivion. The would-be revolutionaries were silenced, insurrectionists abandoned their arms and dispersed to the outlying districts, their causes and grievances ashes upon their tongues. The King of Terrors brought Skagen 6 to heal without ever firing a shot. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the enigmatic yet powerful Ordo Sinister for today. For those of you curious, this is not the only episode I'm gonna do on them, as I do have another one planned after this one. Are you a fan of the Ordo Sinister? Did you even know about them till today? Let us know what your thoughts are on them in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you want to stay a bit more up to date, YouTube willing, you can also click the bell notification icon. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.